Assalamu alaikum wa chase. Hi, yes, Balalo, and welcome to sunny Los Angeles. As you can see, it's a beautiful day, and we are excited to show you inside the estate at Marmo Drive. And don't forget, you're watching Ding Cribs. Let's go. Come on in. Some of the first thing that you'll notice when you come in is the beautiful mahogany pivot door. And then when you look up, you'll see the grand entrance with the really high ceilings that leads to the wide open area and the open concept format. Look a little further out and all you see is miles away with the tree line views. So before we explore this shared living space that's an open concept designed by an international architect, I want to first direct your attention to the bedroom and bathroom that you enter on the left side of the house. Come with me. So the first thing that you'll notice when you come in is the theme of what's considered modern and minimalistic. See the straight lines that are going all throughout. Uh, I'll draw your attention here to the large matte finish tiles. Um, if you look over here, you'll see a really oversized vanity with a really nice LED light and then some very neutral finishes all throughout. Over here, for example, uh, we have some very concealed fixtures a hand shower, um, a very minimalistic window frame over here, and this is my favorite part. All of the toilets actually in this house are imported from Germany. Now I'm not sure if that means that the water is supposed to spin in the other direction, but I think we should be the same now that we're in LA. Now let's check out the bedroom. So for the first of our four bedrooms, this one's probably going to be best used for a guest. The first thing that I like to observe is the natural light coming into the room. But on top of that, you'll also notice that we have recessed lighting that you can dim with this feature over here. For those of you who like watching TV, you'll see that this electrical outlet is placed in the middle of the wall so you can float your uh, flat screen TV. Um, it's a really nicely, modestly sized room, but what also helps maximize the space, you'll notice these closets that are inspired by Japanese design. And as you can see, even for a guest bedroom, there is more than enough closet space here. So I know the house that you've seen so far has been beautiful, but it's getting, it's only gonna get better. So if you just take a second, join me to sit down because what I love most about this house is the open concept and the entertaining space. Now, on one end, we can enjoy TV, hanging out with family over here, and then right below it, you have your beautiful fireplace, uh, electronic fireplace, but the best part about it is that I just shift my focus just a little bit, and then we have just views on views on views. Uh, and then when you have the, the sliding glass door open, you have a perfect breeze that comes in. And let's just take a second to observe how huge this TV is. What is this, like 80, 85 inches? But from what you can see by the way the space was built, this could accommodate probably up to a 100 inch TV. That's your thing. Um, and now let's uh, go right outside and to do so, you'll notice as we push the door open, you can't push it easily. We have a soft closed sliding glass door. So slide the door open pretty much all throughout the span of the living room space, the width of the living room space. And just like that, your living room just expanded from inside to outside. Come on. And when you look all the way down from left to right, you'll see that your patio balcony space spans the entire width of the house, allowing you the freedom to go from the living room to the primary bedroom, back to the kitchen, all at your own convenience. And for a space like this, in addition to standing up on the balcony rail, enjoying the natural beauty, you can set up a coffee table, you can set up a little reading nook, all the ways in which you can endure your outdoor space from the convenience of your home. When you 
shift over just a little bit more, the entertaining continues in your dining space. The beauty of an open concept is that you shift over just a little bit and the entertaining continues. The dining space here can comfortably seat anywhere from six to eight, but it's not just the openness that's beautiful, it's that within this space, Every morning, just imagine for a second, you're sitting here having lunch, having dinner, and you have views. You can't really buy that. Um, and then, of course, if you just take a look over here, you'll notice that it's not just your average kitchen. This here is the state-of-the-art, top-of-the-line chef's kitchen. Um, this is a little known fact, but if you look at these countertops, I wish you guys could feel it. If you could feel this island space, this is what is called Cosentino Decton Leather. Very durable finish, fireproof. Uh, and if you wanted to even cut here without a cutting board, you can comfortably do that and know that you have a very protected space. Um, follow me for a second over here. Um, if you come over here, you see the 60 inch side-by-side -side freezer fridge combo. Um, of course, this is really important over here. We have the eight burner. You might think this is over the top, but you, you'll notice here a eight burner double oven gas stove. So, you know, on one of these panels, you'll have your coffee. On the other panel, you have your eggs cooking, and then you have six more to decide whatever you want to do with them. And this is actually how I know that this was a house that was designed by an international architect, because if you look all around the kitchen, you'll notice an ample amount of cabinet space. Now, whether it's your spices, it's your rubs, if you come from an international background, you know you need space for your spices, you know you, know you need some space for your atmeet. There, there's, there's, uh, there's a demand for a lot of space that you need, and what we see here is that you have plenty of room to put your dabuk all and whatever else you can imagine. So we turn the corner here and what you'll notice first thing is we have a really deep tub with all of your matte black finishes and the best part about it is that while you are doing your work over here you can just look out into the beauty uh, so it's not even like it's hard work. But then also if you just turn the corner over here you'll notice that within the cabinet space you have your built-in microwave. So it's really inconspicuous, doesn't take up any, it's not an eyesore but it really works well within the total space. That's that steady flow, and it's back. That's on its own. Boom. So now that we're done with the kitchen, um, I have a little surprise for you, but we're gonna come back to that later. Let's look at the rest of the room. Follow me this way. So you're probably wondering, what are the specs of this house? Well, that's a good question. In this home on, at the Marmol Estate, we are working with a four bedroom, four bath, 2,700 square foot home with a lot that's a little over 12,000 square feet. That's about 0.28 acres. Now, you're probably wondering, what is a home like this in Los Angeles actually worth? And to get the answer to that question, you're gonna have to wait to the end of the video, stick around and we'll let you know. Until then, let's go check out the rest of the rooms. But before we get to the primary bedroom, let's stop here. And what you'll find is a very inconspicuous washer dryer, all contained in one with additional cabinet space. Really nice and convenient to have it accessible within the home. And now let's check out the next bedroom. Okay, for our second bedroom, you'll notice that there's an ensuite bathroom. Really nice to have your own bathroom in this bedroom. Um, and you'll notice that the staging in this room was situated as an office, which is a great use, but you'll also know that you can use the space however you choose, whether it's a kid's bedroom, whether it's another guest bedroom. There's so many different ways to utilize the space because it's a little wider than the other one as well. So it has a lot of options. Um, some more natural light, and then also when we pan over here, you'll notice the same design as the other bedroom, very functional closet space, Japanese inspired. Let's check out the primary. All right, and now on to our third and the primary bedroom, but before we get there, I want to point your attention out to these items here. So if you look up here and all throughout the house, uh, there's something that you may or might not have noticed, which is the house has central air, which means there's a central place for the thermostat to operate how hot you want it to be, how cold you want it to be, and thankfully here they have a smart nest thermometer. Um, right next to it also is what we have our console that operates the security for the home. Let's go to the primary. Okay, 
And now for our primary bedroom or master bedroom as some would call it. This is where it all goes down. Um, you have your bedroom, your bed over here, and then again, you can't escape the beauty of the views that open up from the sliding glass doors. Uh, and then the other wonderful feature, if you look up, there's a retractable TV that comes down from the ceiling and it allows you to enjoy convenience and entertainment from the comforts of your bed. But it really follows through with the uh, consistent theme of modern minimalistic uh, design because everything is inc inconspicuous. It's hidden, it's sleek, you can tuck it away and then when you want it, you can bring it back out. So we have our Japanese inspired minimalistic closets again, but the beauty of this room is that you have an ensuite bathroom and let me tell you, it's gorgeous. Look inside. First thing I notice is just the gigantic vanity mirror, also LED and also the, the dual sinks that allow you to have the convenience of two people benefiting from the space at one time. And also in that same vein, on one end, we have the deep jacuzzi tub, and then on the very other side of the bathroom, we have the mounted rain head ceiling that allows you to, to enjoy the rainfall uh, shower experience. And then of course, we can't forget the imported German toilets, which allow you to enjoy luxury in that way as well. One of the absolute best features of this room is the way that it flows effortlessly from the indoor and the outdoor. Now, as you push this slow flowing sliding glass door all the way through, what you immediately find is that what was once indoor has now become outdoor. And you can use this space for outdoor patio furniture. You can have your morning coffee here. You can read. You could just enjoy the natural beauty while you are also right inside your room. It's really the best of both worlds. I mean, it's beautiful. This is what you pay for. The views, the experience, the indoor outdoor flow, but most importantly, the ability to enjoy the natural beauty all around you from the convenience of your house, from the interior of your house. And then also what you'll notice is that the outdoor patio space spans all across the width of the house. So it allows you to flow inside and outside the house from different angles. All right, so you have seen the entirety of what makes up the primary home, but remember that secret surprise I had for you? Let's go check that out. So as we come out through the kitchen area, you'll notice right here, we have our carport for the two car garage. And then you'll see that we have this side entrance, which is part of our surprise. It's what we call in Los Angeles an ADU, an accessory dwelling unit, which is where we'll find our last living space, which has its own separate address, but still part of this property. Um, perfect for a guest, perfect for renting out as additional income, um, but it's a totally different space with its own separate entrance. Come on. So we pass our tankless water heater over here and then we come into our separate entrance for our ADU. It's a one bedroom, one bath with also its own separate entrance for a second level balcony space. All right, so as soon as we come in right to my right, you have our one bathroom over here. Really cute and cozy, nothing too crazy over here. Um, but then when you look at the space, you also notice that it's extremely functional and it's very convenient. You have a little kitchenette space over here. Depending on how you want to use it, you can cook up some, some shiro, some, some onion, some doro up without letting the rest of the house also catch the rest of the smell. We know how that goes. Um, but also, you can make this your studio space. You can make this a space for guests when they come, for family, or if you have someone who's staying with you to take care of the kids. Whatever you want to make it, it's perfect for for you to put your own nice little touch on it. In our ADU, um, you also have a very open concept, but on a smaller scale. Um, so right here, you see a modestly sized uh, living room area. They don't have a TV here yet, but this could be a perfect place to situate your, your television. And then right on the other side, you see where all of your entertainment system setup is situated. Um, and then right above it, you'll also notice what's called a mini split system. Um, no central air down here like there is upstairs, but the mini split system allows you to control the temperature to your own liking. Let's go check out the bedroom. 
Now for the one bedroom of our ADU. Come on in. You'll notice, uh, to be consistent with the theme that we've seen throughout the house, a lot of the same features that we found, uh, the very functional minimalist closet space, um, really open concept, recessed lighting, and just a very modestly sized simple room with natural light. First thing you notice as you come out, there's a sizable difference in the balcony down here than there was in the balcony directly above us. Ample space for parties, for events, birthdays, outdoor dining, whatever it is that you might want to do, there's totally enough space to figure it out. Also, perfectly, I didn't even mention it, there's a barbecue. So barbecue event. Um, the options are endless and there's a lot of space to figure it out and make it whatever you want. Uh, and just like we saw upstairs, there's also the same similar views right out yonder for you to enjoy. Now in closing, uh, we mentioned earlier that this was a huge lot, 0.28 acres to be exact. And what you'll find here is that the 12,000 square feet that makes up the lot space is coming down from the house, slightly hillside as you come down, but the owner has plans to develop it into a tennis court or a swimming pool, or really whatever the next buyer wants it to be. So the point is there's a lot of opportunity to make this your own, and we're looking for the next person who's willing to make it special just for their liking. You're probably wondering, like we talked about earlier, what is a beautiful house like this worth? And drum roll, the seller's asking for $2 million. And now that you've seen it all, considering the location, the size of the home, all the specific uh, modifications, I think it's a deal. Um, now, if you want to see more properties like this, make sure to like and subscribe to Dink TV, uh, Dink Cribs to be specific. There's going to be a lot more stuff that's coming down the pipeline and you want to make sure that you stay plugged in. And if you want to learn a little bit more about what myself and my wife do with our real estate business in Los Angeles, check out the show notes below and follow us on Instagram and join our newsletter at Tedros Team. Peace.